well, my name is uh, Jesus Silva, and I, I've been a teacher here at Nicholas at in Fullerton for 19 years. And I'm 52 years old, and I've actually lived most of my adult life here in Fullerton. I lived here for 27 years. Uh, I've done a lot with, with uh, been involved with the city. I'm a Parks and Recs Commissioner right now. I was on the CDBG Commission a while back. And uh, with school, though I've taught, but I've also been uh, responsible for uh, starting a speech and debate program at the, the junior high. I, I do enjoy community service, and, and I've been involved with that, with the teaching, with helping uh, different groups. And I thought this year would be a good year to to be more involved, to be to actually jump into the pool completely. Uh, as you know, my wife is. Uh, this was a mayor here and an assemblywoman and I've been involved in politics but uh, having worked in taught in Florida for 19 years down south of Commonwealth if you will and lived north of Commonwealth I can see the difference in the in the various neighborhoods and, and I do believe that that we need to have a, a, a council member up there who either works or lives in a different community so we can see things from a different lens the, the needs are different if you live down South of Commonwealth, then the needs of if you live up in the you know by by the college by by Cal State Fullerton or right above Raymond Hills, so I definitely feel that I can be that that voice that lens that brings in a different perspective to the council. When I first moved here, uh, I was coaching and, and working in Santa Ana, and when I was uh, first got here, I drove around, and one thing that was really struck me was that the schools were open. In other words, growing up in LA, all the schools I attended and every school I saw had a 10-foot fence around me. So coming to Fullerton, I'm, I'm driving around and because we were looking to buy a house and so forth and I'm looking at all these schools and they're all like open. And that to me was so appealing. So like, oh my goodness, it's like, a, it's, an, it's inviting. And so that was, that was, you know, one of the things that really uh, attracted me first to the city. It was like, this is really cool. And, and the other thing, once I moved in here was that there's so many groups and people active in the city. I mean, you got a group for every cause, and they're passionate about it. And I think that that activism really also made an impact on me. Uh, obviously, the main role is to make sure that the city is managed well, and and we're uh, you know spending our tax dollars wisely. I mean, we have to maintain our city. We have to maintain uh, our, our buildings, our infrastructure. So I think the council has to be really working with all the different department heads or understanding what needs to be done to make sure our infrastructure doesn't fall apart. And we're seeing that right now with some of the streets being uh, constructions going on, the, the sewer, the water lines are being put in. So that's a part of it. The other part is to really be out in the community and, and, and listen to what's going on. What are the needs? And that, it brings me back to what are the needs of all the neighborhoods? Because sometimes I think we, we get uh, we get blinders on and we see one side of it. But you know, as you know, that this city, there's three or four very distinctive communities here that have different needs. So I think as a council member, you have to be willing to go out there, reach out and, and ask questions and listen and, and advocate for them. I think a, a, a system where you have representation from different parts of the, of the community is good. It can only benefit our community. So going to districts, I think we'll do that. It will provide someone from the, the Southwest, the Northeast, the Southeast to come in and say, hey, this is what's going on in my neighborhood. Uh, so I really think that uh, can play a big role in how we manage the city and how we move it forward by being able to, to listen to very uh, five different voices. I think it would be great if we had that theater open. And I think we got to push to get it open. And I think the, the majority of the community would like to see it open. I mean, we already have a couple of businesses there that, that are helping the, the theater uh, with some revenue. I think the next step is we just have to push it through and say, hey, what's it gonna take to get this done? This is important to the community. Let's get it open. Let's work on it. We do need more affordable housing. And, and Example, my, uh, my daughter Molly, she can't afford to move back here. She's a working professional and so forth, and it's just too expensive. So we do need some housing that could say, hey, look, you're, you're early in your career, here's a place where you can afford 
and then not uh, you know bankrupt you if you will or not and, and then go from there and like you said right now you know it's hard for you and it's hard for other people to to move into the town they, they enjoy into the town they work at but I think we, we do need to look at that a little more well I, I think ever since uh, Chief Hughes has come in he's done a great job uh, of uh, not only managing the, the, the police officers but but of uh, of bringing that trust back to the department. He did an excellent job of making sure that uh, the people who were involved, either A, got the proper training they needed, or B, they were dismissed because they, they broke policies and procedures of the department. And I know he's, he started a, a, a somewhat of a round table with the, the chief's uh, advisory group. I think that's a step in the right direction. And also, I think with, with the cameras coming on, uh, you know, what are they, when I was coaching basketball, we used to say the video doesn't lie, let's go look at it. And I think that will also allow the public to see what's going on and what's happening. So if there is an incident where we're like, well, what's going on? We've got video. And I'm sure Chief Hughes would not hesitate if, if his officers are out of line or, or not following the, the protocol, he will deal with them. Well, uh, yeah, there, there is a lot of bars and free market, free enterprise, I get that. But on the other side, if it's costing us money, if it's costing us resources, we have to be able to, to say, hey, this is costing us X number of dollars or whatever it is, and make sure we're not running in, in, in the red, if you will. Because it is, it is an issue, to mitigate that, maybe we need to, to look at, at a charging for parking here in the downtown area. And that will offset, I think, some of the costs that, that are, that in, they come with having so many bars. When my wife and I walk downtown in the morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, we see the, the effects of, of a night out. Because it's not fair to some of the insurance companies, the, the other retail companies, when you have this mess that the bar scene created, and now they've got to clean up after their own. So we, we have to figure out a way, and working with the, with the local com business community, how, how do we get other businesses in here so we can kind of mitigate that uh, that scene at night, but but that that's gonna that's a challenge, and we have to put our heads together and say, how do we make downtown safer at night? My, my contributors have been really local residents. Some of my neighbors have been my biggest contributors. Uh, the fact that they are my only contributors. One thing we did learn with Sharon's campaign back in the day is that uh, you can win a raise here by reaching out to the local residents, the local community, and asking for their support and getting their support. I do believe that uh, the voice of 66% of people who voted with Measure W to, to leave it open should be heard. We should listen and see if we can work with that. But at the end of the day, you do need some funding to get that uh, land open and usable. So if we can do that, I would be totally behind it. and. Uh, we, we've got to see what we can do with it. Again, having taught here 19 years and lived in Fullerton for 27 years, I feel that I can bring a different perspective to the dais up there. So vote for me because I will listen to you. I know the community and I really do enjoy being of service to the community.